Good evening and welcome to Montpelier Civic Forum as we count our way down to Town Meeting Day 2020. And this is one of a series of programs that help you to meet the candidates and become familiarized with the issues. And we've got some really interesting shows to watch. Uh, this is one of the rare years where we have two open seats in one district, which is District 3. And with Ashley Hill's resignation, we have a one-year term. And then we have a normal two-year term, actually with Glenn Hutchinson's, res uh, not resignation, but his desire to return back to private life. And then in District 2 and District 1, we have incumbents, uh, Connor Casey and Donna Bate, who are unchallenged. And we put them together in one show that went so long that it's broken into two, and it's a great show. And we have all the candidates in District 3, and that was really good. Uh, we also have... And we have Ann Watson, our mayor, talking about what it's like to be mayor. And basically, she goes through the issues. And then we have Bill Fraser on the city budget. And we have Libby on the school budget. And those were good shows as well. Now, tonight, we're focusing in on the school district. And we have the candidates for school district. Each of them has their own show. And... This is, this is the challenge of the night, is to mispronounce this man's name as almost everyone does. Aniket? Aniket. Aniket Kulkarni. That's right. You're okay, right. would you pronounce it now? Oh, uh, well, I'll pronounce it. Uh, I usually do Aniket Kulkarni. That uh, sounded approximately what I said. Yes, that's, yeah. So it's, it's very close. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll let it slide. Uh, and which district do you live in, in Montpelier? Um, I live in district, uh, I live in... Well, that, that's a good question. I don't know which district exactly I live in, but I live up uh, uh, Town Hill Road. So I that's think that's District, district two. 2. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you're running for school board. I am. Is this the first time you've run for an office in the I am. I am. But this is the first time I'm running for an office, any office. Now, at what point, now you probably, as young as you are, relative to me, of course, um, you probably have a child in the school. I do. I have a daughter uh, who's in Main Street Middle School. She goes to eighth grade. And she went through Union Elementary? That is correct. She went through, um, she, we moved in 2011, uh, and she started the kindergarten. So she went through the Union and then um, the middle school, and then next year she's going to be in the high school. Now, what gave you the thought, I want to be on the school board? I mean, there's tons of parents who have kids who started in kindergarten, went to the middle school and are going into high school next year who don't step forward to the school board? Well, uh, to be honest, this was not on my radar um, to, to run for the school board. Um, and I have been, you know, as, as with any parent, I've been uh, reading up on, on the school affairs and just paying attention to what's going on in general. But the thought never crossed my mind that I need, you know, um, maybe I should, I should join the board. Um, one of the current board members, uh, Michelle Braun, um, I got who a call. Who has been on the board seemingly forever. She has been on the board. Who chose not to stay on the board. Yeah, and so um, she reached out uh, uh, to my wife, my wife Tara. She teaches in Norwich, and um, she is an environmental professor. And so she has worked with Michelle in the past, and so Michelle was reaching out to her um, and... and uh, she was looking for, um, she, she told Tara that even though she knew Tara's plate was full, she was asking if I would be interested in, in running for uh, the school board. What did Michelle see in, this, this sounds more insulting than it is, it isn't insulting, but what did Michelle see in, in you that she thought would be appropriate for the board? That would be a question for her. <laughs> <laughs> She's not running, so you don't have her. But what, how did she approach your wife? I mean, what was it that... that uh, she was saying, what need would you fit on the board? Well, um, I, I talked to Michelle a little bit about this um, when, when um, Tara, you know, kind of put us in contact. And, um, and again, I don't want to speak for her. One of the things maybe is what I bring to the table um, as a, uh, you know, as I, I come from a different background. I'm an engineer um, um, I went to engineering school, studied civil and environmental engineering, but then I switched lines, and I'm, I have an IT company that I run. So I, I, I'm a, I come from a business background. And so 
uh, perhaps the, you know, bringing in a dis different perspective um, uh, might be good for the board. Um, but again, I, I don't want to speak for her or what she, what she thought. As a parent with an IT company, and as a parent who basically, as an engineer and looking at maintenance of old buildings and, and our infrastructure of our schools, um, have you had that as an eye from kindergarten as to how your daughter was taught IT in our schools? Um, I have, we've always been... I mean, had a sideways eye to that? Um, yes and no. Um, we've always been um, kind of parents who want to get involved in our child's life and especially the education. And um, coming from a different background, we, 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 both me and my wife grew up in India. And so um, this was 40 years ago. So the, the school climate and how, um, you know, things are taught, uh, it's completely different. Um, In what sense? So let me Let's talk about elementary school. Sure, sure. Let me give you an example. Um, and I, my, my wife and I, I have talked about this at length. Um, in India, at least when we were growing up, it was a rigid system. So, you know, you, you, even from the first grade, you, you were taught a certain way and you had to learn a certain way. It was fact-based. Uh, it was... Well, it was it was not only fact based but it was very disciplined so you couldn't uh, you know you couldn't there wasn't a conversation going on there wasn't a dialogue going on with the teacher and so it was you know there were of course the the size the the uh, the class size was huge too um, there were what 80 were kids 80 kids yeah in there one were class? 80 kids to one teacher and so so it had to be disciplined you know you can't have 80 kids running around was this a private around. or a public school setting it was a public school setting um, and it was throughout India that was that um, was most of the public schools were that way. Uh, things have changed a little bit, but you know the point of me telling you is this: when we come into this it must school, be a culture shock. It was it was a. I mean, we knew because I uh, both of us came uh, to do our masters, uh, and so we were you know the higher education we were we were, we were familiar with it. But looking at the, the the kindergarten level and right from that age where the class sizes are 20, 25, that's a huge difference. And so initially, our reaction was, well, you know, 20 is amazing. 25 is amazing when we are coming back from, you know, 80 kids to a teacher. So there's a, there's a huge, um, you know, disparity there. Um, but again, uh, going back to another difference is how, how teachers and kids interact with each other, which we thought was amazing over here. Um, where, well, it's child-based. Yes, exactly, exactly. And so um, each, what that allows you to do where you have a, a, a main teacher and a support teacher for 20, 25 kids, what that allows you to do is spend enough time with the kid and know what works for them, what doesn't work for them. And so we, we saw that as a, as a huge positive thing. Um, and so we were you know, really impressed with that. Is your daughter bilingual? Uh, she she actually knows three languages, and those would be English, uh, but, Hindi, and well, she doesn't know. She she can understand a little bit Hindi, uh, but my native language is Marathi, which is um, you know different than Hindi. Where is Marathi spoken? Uh, in Mumbai primarily, but the, the Mumbai is a city, and the state Maharashtra, which is where uh, which is the native language. And my wife comes from southern part of India, and so she speaks a different language. Uh, what she, language does Konkani. she speak? So. Well, this is educational tonight. <laughs> and how do those vary from Hindi, which is, I suppose, national language in a sense? The Hindi is the national language. They, they all share the same script, uh, but they're, they're different languages. Um, her language doesn't actually have a written script, so they you know, just get that. But, I mean, many of these languages are, you know, they, they are based off of Sanskrit. Uh, and so, you know, the, the script is... is, is Sanskrit or Devanagari script. Now, when your daughter arrived in kindergarten at Montpelier, was she fully fluent in, in English? She was. Um, she, um, so we moved, you know, we, as I said, we, we've, uh, me and my wife came to do masters. And we met here, and then we had our daughter. So she was, she she was born, born she was born in Florida. So we were in Florida at that time. And then we went back a couple of years to India um, and then came back. And so she has always been, um, you know, well-versed in Dia. My daughter has been well-versed in three languages because, you know, I speak Marathi to her. My 
wife speaks um, Konkani uh, with her, and then Dia, uh, all around her is English, so you know she she's learning all three. In kindergarten, did she did she feel welcome, culturally welcome? Yes. I mean, this absolutely. is not a diverse community in one sense. It is not. It's not an ethnically diverse community. It is not. But, but I mean, that's, that's the credit goes to the people of Montpelier. I mean, we felt welcome right from day one. Um, and, and not only us, but, yeah, Dia felt very welcome. And she, she uh, you know, she fit right into, uh, in with her class. And she had a whole bunch of friends growing up. And even now... Uh, she feels, you know, part of the community. And one of the things we joke with Dia, me and my wife, is, we, you know, we, we uh, were from Florida. We had been living in Florida. So we always joke with her, let's, let's just go back to Florida. We'll move back to Florida. And she says, no, you guys move. I want to stay here. This is where, you know, this is where I grew up. This is where my friends are. So, What was that first winter like for her? So we came in 2011. And 2011, uh, if I'm not... Uh, mistaken, that was one of the mildest winter. So we kind of eased into it. Um, I, I remember distinctly March 10th or March 12th, and it was sunny, there was no snow on the ground, and it was, I think, 50 or 60 degrees temperature. So, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a smooth transition, to say the least, for us. To this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, to, you know, to coming back from Florida and getting right, into right. the winter 2011. And then, of course, 2012, 2013, you know, there were some, uh, not harsh, but there were some days where it was, you know, 20 below. But we, we, you know, we're accustomed to it now. Now, you're accustomed to how languages were taught in India, your wife, and, and you went through a fairly similar experience, although you were in completely different parts of a very large nation. Yes. And mathematics, science, of the standard curriculum. Mm -hmm. How does that differ from what... Your daughter was meeting at Union. The um, same subjects, in a sense. It, it it is same. Yeah, yeah, same subjects in the sense. One of the things that that I really liked um, is is when we were growing up. Um, let's you know take for example math, um, addition, you know, or multiplication. You were taught a certain way. You take you know you carry over things and you know you, right, right. that that's the method and you stick with it. Nobody explained why. Why do you New do math. this? Yeah, well, not just math, but why do you carry over one? Why do you do this? That, that's called you... new math is what it was called. Okay, okay. So, so why do you do that? And what's the, what's, the, you know, what's the basis behind it? You know, nobody explained. So we just thought this is how it's done, and we just, we just did it. Which, for um, smart kids, when they grew up, they themselves connect the dots and, and get there. But, and I'm not saying, you know, they're not, other people are not smart. You know, I've, I've heard the one expression that stuck to me. I think it's, um, I don't know who it is, but you can't judge a fish uh, by looking how it climbs the tree. You know, the <laughs> fish, fish is going to swim. That's how. So some people learn differently and others learn differently. So, so for some people, it connects when they're in fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, oh yeah, this is why you carry over one and this is why, how you add it. But, but for others, it doesn't make sense and then they start falling behind, which in, in the case of Union, uh, and I think it's um, all over the U.S., or new math, that they, they teach you different ways and they teach you, you know, the, the, the concept behind it and let you figure out how, how I, this I is. We're talking now about skills-based learning, okay. which is moving all throughout our system, and that's the proficiency-based graduation now. Mm -hmm. uh, insofar as skills, the same skills can be used in different subjects. Yep. Did you mm -hmm. see that? Life skills, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And learning um, skills. Learning skills, and, and you know, uh, my wife calls them, you know, it's any skill, it, it may not be pertaining to you know, one particular subject, but it's a, it's a life skill that you can carry and, and carry throughout your life. And Was that explained well to you as parents, the kind of style of, of curriculum that Union was um, teaching, teaching children that your child was included in? Were you well aware of, of the overall thrust of that? I was, I was. And again, uh, maybe, maybe the... Uh, we have the unfair advantage of my wife uh, being a professor, um, and then you know we talk about that, and 
some things that she, you know, him, she, her and I, we talk together and she kind of explained it from her point of view. And, you know, so we have an open dialogue going on. So, but to answer your question, yes, we were, we were well aware of the, 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 the methodology being used and, and how it would help and we were in sync with it. As parents, did you feel like the school had good communication with you on a consistent basis? To a fault, I think, yes. Um, I mean, How so? um, like, and I, I, I kid uh, partially. Every week, they were, you know, right from the kindergarten, the, ki the teachers were emailing us. And, and, and um, you know, the, being in IT, one of the things that I dread is getting an email. I mean, IT being information <laughs> technology. Information technology, yes. Software is, our, you know, we're always connected. I'm always connected on my phone and whatnot. So anytime an email comes, if multiple emails, I, I you know, I, 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 I um, uh, you know. You kinda, end up distracted. Yeah, I distracted or I feel like, oh, one more email to deal with. But, and that's why I cared, you know, to a fault. But, no, the communication was amazing where we knew what was going on, when, what was happening, and um, we were getting updates regularly. Uh, we have kids at Union who are low-income kids, mm -hmm. uh, subsidized lunches, food mm -hmm. stamps, and the like, and there's an achievement gap between those kids and the kids who are not low income. Mm -hmm. And the school district this year has made it a goal to try and close that, consciously try and close that gap. You would be sitting on that school board. Would you have any suggestions whatsoever, or, or thoughts on, on how to close that gap that's been persistent for years in this community? Um, I, I don't think I can comment on that as right now because again I don't know uh, getting into it I'd like to know from all aspects what's being done where the, the, the deficiency is and trying to attack it from that angle I think um, but it wouldn't be fair for me to, to make a comment on that just yet just as with you know my personal uh, work or business you know I wouldn't go in a meeting and, and start saying well this is how you should do it my, my job is to understand what's going on and then provide solutions. Now, on the elementary school level, something that, that you are adept at mm -hmm. and adroit at, did you feel the IT approach was what it could be? Or, or did you look at it, you know, and say, hey, uh, I, I could see where this could be done differently? IT approach, what is... Uh... Uh, computers in the classroom, computer instruction. Uh, you said they're using um, emails to, you know, contact parents and the like. Did you feel that, that they had a real good grasp on contemporary IT in an educational setting? Um, to an extent, yes. I, I did think that. One of the things that I, you know, I did um, think, and I've been thinking about it, is and we, we all deal with it, is security. Um, from the IT perspective, when I, when I look at it. Security I, in what sense? Um, secu uh, there's security for our kids away from where we don't want them on, in IT. Yes. There's security of the data of the district in terms of confidentiality. It's, 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 it's everything. Um, you know, security that you talked about, but also security in terms of your private data. You know, what, what kids are learning. Um, when you have, uh, let's say, uh, devices, that, that kids use, you know, there is possibility that they're, all their activity is tracked um, or, or, you know, the data is gathered on them. So, so from that perspective, um, security is important. What is shared? Privacy is important. And so um, one of the things I, I'm interested in to look at is how is that handled? And, and do we, um, you know, do we need to do something about it or or add some measures that, that we are protect, well protected against it. There are some people who would say that kids have too much computer access, that there's too much time in front of that screen, that sitting and going to a calculator and figuring out something is just a step too far down a road that doesn't lead to self-sufficiency beyond the screen. Could you talk about that for elementary school kids? Absolutely. and and and. There is always going to be need to be a. There's always going to you, you'll always need to maintain a balance. You can't just put a screen in front of them and say go, go do it, you know, and then always have that. One thing I liked about the elementary school, which I've experienced myself, um, is how the kids were 
uh, taken out of the classroom and go on nature walks or you know uh, go to the Hubbard Park. And I've I've accompanied the kids. You know, every couple of weeks uh, I would go with them and and with my daughter's class and and I enjoyed that experience. Yeah, learning. yeah, yeah, exactly. And it wasn't you know it was the fun learning um, and I, that was a huge contrast I was able to draw from my personal experience as a kid. We never got to experience that. So we get back to child-based learning. <laughs> where the child in a sense, and, and we'll get to this when we talk about the middle school, because mm -hmm. it's even more steered by the child herself or himself. Kellogg Hubbard Library, what's that like compared to a library in where you grew up? Um, I don't think I, and the, the libraries that, that we had, um, I'm trying to th remember, I don't, I don't think I've ever, be, I'd ever been to a public library in India. Um, but the libraries I went to were uh, mostly really small, um, you know, very limited selection uh, libraries. So, I mean, Hubbard, Kellogg Hubbard is running overrun with children. You yes, know? And, and that's good. Yes, that's not that's not bad. What was that like for in terms? Well, you'd been in Florida already. So, what was that like in Florida to see the role of the public library in child rearing? Um, and so, when we were in Florida, my daughter was just. Um, first couple of years of her life, she, she was, you know, we were back in India, and then we were in Florida, she was about three, and between three and five years. So we didn't uh, get to... So it was up here is where the first real... Exactly, your experience, was. that's what I was getting at. Yes, the real interaction with the library. And it was amazing, I mean, Dia took a few um, uh, um, classes um, in library, and there was, I think, summer camps or something. And where she got to play with the robots and, and things like that. And it was just, just, just amazing to, to be able to see that and provide her that opportunity. The middle school. How is the middle school experience for you different than the elementary school experience as a parent? Um, so d different in terms of um, the child interaction my, my, with me and uh, my daughter. That has gone down a little bit, um, where I'm not as involved in what is going on. And is she's, that a point of independence, or is that, that a concern? Is, that is no. That is a point of independence, where you know, I can I, I can see what she's doing and, and what she's learning, but she wants to do all on, on her own, and she doesn't want dad to come in and, and sit with her. Um, so there are things that she's you know the the resources that she's getting in uh, school is providing um, different again. I'm, Going back to the IT side of things, where she she has uh, sites that she visits and, and online education and things like that that are that uh, kind of go into the the proficiency based learning or the you know child where you get to pick what you want you want to do and the teachers are encouraging in that and, and you know they're they're focusing on what Dia wants to do uh, for Dia uh, so that's 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 impressive. Boy, this is a commercial for the school district. <laughs> uh, what are the weaknesses of the school district that you perceive, the relative weaknesses? Um, I think they're trying to address those things. Uh, but uh, one of the things, even you know, right from, from Dia growing up from kindergarten, is the behavioral issues um, that are going on. And I think they're trying to address it. But I, I've, we have experienced it uh, ourselves where Dia was getting affected by uh, those things, and how, how do you deal with that? That's always, always a But that's a, tricky a continuing thing. issue for seemingly forever. Forever, exactly, exactly. But that, I mean, that's, that's the, 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 the way they, you, know, you address these things can change depending on what level of um, disturbances is the wrong word to use, but you know, what issues you're facing um, in that grade or in, in, in that climate. In the high school, uh, do you have any contact whatsoever with Montpelier High School? I do actually. Um, I have a, uh, so we're hosting a ex German exchange student this year and she goes to the uh, high school. She's a junior. Um, so this was a, this was a new uh, thing for us. And a we preview. Got, exactly, we got a, we got a preview um, of how it would be and so it's been a it's been a very nice experience. Um, I remember, and it's when she came in, Daphne, uh, her name is, 
um, she came in, she had to go meet with the, the guidance counselor. And in fact, uh, uh, all of us, including Dia, we all went uh, with Daphne, and the guidance counselor was amazing. You know, they, they, he focused on her, but Dia had some questions, and they, you know, he, he um, answered all her questions as well. So now next year, Dia will, Dia will be in, uh, in high school next year. Boy, doesn't that make you feel old? <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> in terms of high school, uh, do you feel, I mean, you're responsible for Daphne while she's here. Yes. Do you feel that you're getting the feedback that you need? Um, she, uh, Daphne is an exceptional student, um, and she came here on a scholarship. So getting, you know, going into it, we kind of knew that she's going to be a good student. And so the feedback. She's fully fluent in English. She is. She she speaks very well English. Um, and um, so so, the first parent teacher meetings we had it was about you know how great Daphne is. So that's what we got to hear. So we knew getting in, the feedback from Daphne has been great. She, I was just about to yeah, say, did yeah. she feel welcome? Yeah. So she felt um, really welcome. In fact, before before I got here today. Um, uh, she came back from school and she was on her phone and I just, you know, I was uh, there and I, I asked her, I said, what's going on? What, what are you doing? And she's like, oh, look at this. And she showed me a whole bunch of kids on her Snapchat or, or something mm -hmm. like that. And she said, these are all my high school friends. So, you know, she's uh, simulated. And, it's and, a small town. Yeah, it's a small town. And, and again, going back to everybody's welcoming uh, and, you know, they're, they're making you part of, they making you feel like part of community. So. Uh, I've often said, that when our son was, he came to the district in second grade, uh, that in third grade, his prom date was going to be somewhere in that third grade class, <laughs> which would be his prom date. And um, we were wrong. Uh, she was in a fourth grade class. <laughs> no, it's a small town. There aren't that many people, and there aren't that many students. Yeah. What is the future of our district? Is, a tiny di is it sustainable? Um, I think the education that's, that the kids are getting, again, it's, it's from my perspective, from my, my kid, Dia, and to a smaller extent, Daphne, what, I, what I'm hearing. Um, but from that perspective, the, the education that kids are getting is, is a quality education. Dia last year went to, they have a, uh, a, a small camp, uh, a weekend camp at MIT that you can go mm -hmm. um, and take some classes. And she you know, she was comfortable doing that. So even coming from a small town and um, as a seventh grader, you're roaming MIT campus. It's a huge campus. And there are no parents to walk you there. So we basically have to drop her off for two days and then she goes to her classes and whatnot. She's confident. And so that confidence comes from, you know, not, not from us or not just from us. She spends most of her day in school. So that's where she's getting that from. So. You know, the education and then the, the, the interaction, social skills, I mean, that's, that's what school's providing it. Parents, you said you volunteered. Mm -hmm. uh, were there other parents volunteering? There were, absolutely, yes. That's something that, that's noteworthy in our district, are the number of parents who step forward to volunteer in the schools. Uh, are you familiar with community-based learning? That's Matt McLean's program in the high school. I, I, I am a little bit, but not not. It's uh, where the depth. students shadow in businesses yes. in order to see what the outside world looks like. And in that case, Matt has a number of businesses that step forward for our schools. I consider that a strength, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you do as absolutely, well. Absolutely, absolutely. One of the, I mean, uh, the the thing that I heard about it, I didn't hear about the businesses, but the thing that I heard about it was um, in, from high school, some kids go to the, uh, to the capital. Right. And, and, and that, I thought that well, was... It's, that actually, it's the middle school. Are you talking about the pages? I don't know what, what the, oh, the, the, okay. the program in, is called. Well, in eighth grade, there are kids who are in a competition with other kids to become uh, pages and they working in the legislature. And they're okay. paid to do that. And they Basically, um, it's, it's an honor for eighth graders. But yeah, other people are doing, you're right, other high school students are doing internships in state government, yeah. uh, which is a great opportunity. I, th I thought that, I thought as well. Uh, yeah. Our school has advanced placement courses. Uh, but again, is all this sustainable in a town of 7,500? 
That's a great question, and that's always the, 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 the balancing act that you have to do and, and figure out, you know, how much um, you, can, you can do in a small town. Uh, but so far, from my perspective, as I, as I mentioned, um, we seem to be doing the right things uh, for our kids where, you know, you're, you're giving them the opportunities. Um, as far as sustainability, that's the other side of it. Can you, you know, with the 7,500, 7,900 people right. strength, can you keep providing these things and not have it um, affect the, the other side of it? I'll bet you don't have an opinion on this if you don't say so. Um, MSMS, Montpelier, uh, the middle school, mm -hmm. Main Street Middle School, the physical facility, do you, do you, um, are you keeping up on those talks? Um, not as much as I, I should have, uh, to be honest. And not as much as you will if you're on the, when you're on the board. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I don't, um, yeah, yeah, as I said, I, 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 I'm not well versed with it to, to, have a, to have a strong opinion about it yet. With an engineering background, I'm sure that you'll have, as I speak for you, <laughs> I'm sure that you'll have an interest in the $500,000 that we put aside every year that we tax ourselves in order to keep the facilities up so that we're not buying a, a roof every 10 years or mm -hmm. something on that level. Would you engage yourself on the board in that 500000 and how the administration can best spend 500000 in maintenance? Um, as a, since I will be on the board or I'm... I'm you will be on the yeah, board. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it is my obligation to look at these things. Um, so I, I wouldn't want to just join the board and step away from just because it's a hard conversation to have. Um, but uh, well, my question is the opposite. From given your background and experience, would you jump in more aggressively and say, you know, I have prior experience in engineering? To, to, to a degree, I think the engineering experience would help, but this... Um, if I'm, if I'm incorrect, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not the question of, you know, should it cost this much or, or whatnot, is should we be spending this? Or correct? is this a priority? I mean, we have $500,000 to spend. We have a list of things that we could do. It's up to the board. Well, it's up to the administration to make recommendations. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, it's up to the board to decide priorities. Priorities. Yeah. Um, so again, I, I was trying to, I guess, maybe um, I hone in the, on the wrong aspect of your question, but I was thinking, well, as an engineer, that's not the, the background that's going to that's gonna help solve the, or help me get into the things. Because from the engineering perspective, okay, well, you're going to, you know, you have a facility that needs repairing, then you spend that money. But can that money be spent something on something else? That's that's the the balancing that, act we'll have to do. Which is eternal. Yeah, yeah. Which is which is you know, as an engineer coming from it, if you're just looking at that, then you'll say, yeah, this is what money needs to be spent. But from the different angle, as a, as a parent, as a as a uh, consumer of of the school system, you'll need to look at other things as well, and then determine the priority whether this is something that you want to do or not. When Michelle asked you about running. Did she explain how many hours a week she was putting into this? That that was my, one of my first questions. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I asked her point, point blank, what's the time commitment? Because I, I don't want to say yes to something I can't commit to, right? Um, so, and she was honest uh, about what, uh, how much time commitment there would be. I also met with Jim and... Jim Murphy, the yep, school board president. Yep, yep. I, I had um, 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 him and Bridget. Um, she's Bridget a to say on the school yeah, board, school, the yeah, vice, vice president. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I met bo with both of them, um, and one of the questions was, you know, what's the real time commitment to this? And all of them were forthright and, and honest about it. And what I've heard, um, it 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 sounds like I should be able to I should be able to meet the commitments. I wish I wish you good luck. As you said, you are on the school board. Everyone who's running this in this term is on the school board. And uh, I want to thank you for coming and, and speaking with us. It was my pleasure. Thank you so thank much you. for inviting me. Thank you for coming. And thank you for watching.
And I hope that all of you will watch the other episodes of this because they're all good. There's great candidates, really good discussions, including the budget discussion from Bill Fraser and from Libby. Those are good discussions as well. And um, most importantly, get out and vote on town meeting day. I realize that everyone who's running for the school board will be elected and will be elected. The two incumbents will be elected, but just weighing in, in and of itself, is an important message of civic engagement. Thank you so very much for watching.